Welcome to a code report response video where we respond to a conference talk that just came out in the last couple of weeks. It was a talk given by Bjorn Faller, who I have met multiple times and had many conversations with at different C++ conferences. One of my favorite speakers, he gives talks on not just functional programming concepts that can be used in C++, but also other great talks on like cache coherency. I will link some of my favorites down in the description below. However, the talk we're going to be reviewing slash responding to, or more precisely, we're going to respond to one example, was an example from this more functional with C23 talk that was given at Code Dive 2023, just back in November. This is a conference that takes place in Wroclaw, Poland. I've presented, I think, two different times at this conference. Fantastic conference, fantastic talk. Be sure to go watch the whole thing once you're done watching this video. However, Bjorn, he broke my heart. He broke my heart because he gives this one great example that uses some C20 and 23 views and stops short of the perfect solution. And so this video, we're gonna watch that two minute clip. Also, we're gonna watch a Combinator clip a little bit later, and then I'm gonna refactor and take that last final step that he did not take, because he broke, he broke my heart, Bjorn. We're gonna have to talk about this the next time we meet at a conference. But without further ado, let's watch this clip from More Functional with C23. Another problem. We have a sequence of numbers, 1382381. And I want to calculate a new sequence that is the difference between all these numbers. One good helper from the ranges library is uh, views pairwise. Pairwise makes a new sequence of reference to neighboring elements in the sequence. So it will be called with, it will pass on a sequence containing reference to 1, 3, 3, 8, 8, 2, 2, 3, 3, 8, 8, 1, like so. And there are other, uh, there are many other views in, uh, in the ranges library that obviously do different things, but also pass tuples, you know, tuples of reference. That, that is a very common thing in, uh, in ranges. So how do we get from, from these tuples of pairs to calculate the difference? Well, we can go to ranges transform. We know that we will be called with uh, a, a tuple containing t references to two values. So we can use structure binding to destructure it and get the values A and B. That makes it a little bit easier to read the code. And then we return B minus A. And now we have the sequences. We have the sequence of differences. So that is good. But this is a little bit of an eyesore, I think, because we with this, we can make these wonderful things. Apply Swiss of 1, 0 to the minus. I think that is cool. I also think that it's extremely exaggerated for this tiny example. <laughs> Don't do this. But, but it, it has happened to me more than once that I have something that, that I need to register a callback. And I have exactly the function, but it just doesn't have the arguments in the right order. And here's a way to get around that. So we just finished watching the clip. Essentially, we have this simple example that's using the C++23 pairwise view and the C++20 transform view. And Bjorn remarks that it's a bit of an eyesore that we have to use C++17's structured bindings to destructure the tuple that is formed from the pairwise view. And so he goes on to add a couple different helper utilities. One is a wrapper around std apply, and the other is called swizzle, which is pretty neat. We're not gonna look at these implementations. We are just going to use them and look at the code that uses them. So I'm gonna kind of reduce the code off of this screen. And we're also gonna get rid of the includes just so we can blow this up a little bit more. But you can see here now that by using apply and swizzle, we can make use of std minus and we can avoid that structured C++17 structured bindings. I was, I was heartbroken though with this. First, before we get to why I was heartbroken, we're gonna reformat this code a little bit to make use of the C++23 uh, print format function that's coming. I don't think GCC 13.2, which is what I'm using on Gobbled Explorer or Compiler Explorer, has implemented that yet, so we are gonna make use of the FMT FUMPT implementation, and we're also going to use a couple consts, and we're gonna name the sequence, the view that's created by using pairwise and transform, and we're gonna call it deltas, because that is what the array language Q calls this function, or the similar function to it. And so now we have a simplified, maybe easier to read, uh, you know, version of Bjorn's code here. So the thing that broke my heart the most 
was that there is actually a view in C23 that is specifically a combination of pairwise and transform that gives you the ability to avoid that destructuring that Bjorn was doing before. And it's called pairwise transform. So as soon as you make use of the C23 uh, view, you don't have to use apply or C17 structured bindings or, you know, std colon colon get zero and get one. You can avoid all of that by just making use of this transform view because when we were designing this, we observed that it is very irritating to have that kind of pattern where you have to destructure these tuples in order to apply binary operations to them. So, absolutely fantastic that we have this in C23. That's what broke my heart for the most part. However, the next thing I want to point out is that he, Bjorn, builds up this swizzle, 1 0. And later on in the talk, he goes on to give this mini rant on combinators and even references a talk of mine called Composition Intuition. Let's take a look at that rant right now. And I'm sorry. Uh, in functional program, a uh, family of higher order functions that deals purely only with composing functions is called combinators. Okay? And there are many well-known combinators. And by the way, I, I strongly recommend that you watch this talk by Connor Hoekstra that he held this summer in uh, Toronto, where he goes through a plethora of ways to compose functions in several different programming languages. It's an awesome talk. But the reason for my rant is that all these well-known combinators, they have names like B, C star, O, F, double star, J, and uh, or Ornithological equivalents. Bluebird kernel once removed, owl finch twice removed, J. Yeah, the bird J for the letter J is cute, I, I, I admit. But uh, seriously, there is even a pages like this that lists how you can find the different combinators, what they are called, which birds and which letters. The one I wrote is the B combinator, the blue bird combinator, by the way. I, I am not writing blue bird in my code, nor am I writing capital B. Saved a little bit by mathematics, though, where we say that functional composition is an operation, the, the ring operator that you might remember, that takes two functions and does exactly the composition that I did. So I'm sticking with the compose, I'm sorry. And here we are back. I agree with a lot of what Bjorn said. The fact that these combinators are named B, C, J, F, etc., is confusing and not great. I'm not advocating for calling compose the B combinator in your code. What I am advocating for is recognizing these composition patterns. And what is incredibly funny about the fact that he is using this swizzle one zero, this is a combinator. Famously, this is the C combinator, which I have implemented in a library called Blackbird that's being used behind the scenes, which is why we're using the using namespace combinators. Now, once again, I'm not saying that underscore C is a good name for this. I happen to know all of the combinator names, so I don't mind seeing this C underscore C or underscore B in my code to identify these different composition patterns, but this actually exists in a library called Boost HANA, which is a metaprogramming library under the name Flip, which was borrowed from Haskell, which is what Haskell calls the C combinator. So my point being here is that even though um, Bjorn is saying, oh, you know, these names aren't great, my, my main point is that everyone should familiarize themselves with these composition patterns because they come up so often. So often that he actually just implemented this whole swizzle thing, which is a much, much more general version of doing this kind of, you know, argument flipping around. But in this case, when you just have a binary function and you're flipping two of them, that's the C combinator. Absolutely fantastic. And now that we have my Blackbird library in the background, we can save a couple more characters as us array language developers love to do. And we can just make a call to the binary sub, which is short for subtraction, which is just basically a wrapper around the std colon colon minus function object. That is the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Like I said, Bjorn, one of my favorite speakers, definitely go watch the talk. He does a great job of actually showing how to use these functional concepts and ideas in real C++ code, whereas a lot of my talks are kind of just up in the sky. However, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and we will see you in the next video.